Hi guys, well today I'm going to be making a coffee table. So I'm working with a live edge um, skeet slab for the top and uh, flat bar steel for the base. I'm Lynn and this is the Darwin Orbit channel. So for today's project, I'm going to be using a flat bar steel for the base uh, that I'm going to be bending, so no welding involved in this project. And for the top here, I'm working with this beautiful piece of mesquite that I'm going to be shaping with some hand tools. So let's get building. So uh, this is the slab, and I really like how the sapwood is so yellow, but then there's the red mesquite color to contrast that. At first, I'm just kind of looking over the piece. It is very flat, which is nice, so it doesn't need any jointing. I'm deciding which side should be up and down, and seeing how much the size differs on either side. To uh, get a better idea of where to cut the sides, I'm marking a line so the two sides will be parallel. Also, this is the steel I picked up, so just kind of thinking about what this is going to look like and how I'm going to construct the base. Then I'm getting ready to cut off the edges, so setting up a board to follow. And I'm simply using the circular saw to make the cuts. Now uh, time to clean the slab up a bit. So this is a live edge piece of wood, which means there is still bark left on the sides. Now I want to keep part of that rustic nature, however I don't want loose bark falling off the coffee table. So here I'm using a draw knife to remove loose bark. I made sure I sharpened it before using it here, and it's a lot of fun doing this job. The draw knife is one of my favorite tools that I don't get a chance to use that often, so I was really enjoying this. It's quite mesmerizing, and then deciding how much to leave, how much to take off. I also brought out a large chisel here to continue to clean this up. To create a chamfer on the edges, I used a number 4 smoothing plane here. And I'm trying to create a smooth transition from the bark and the sapwood to the edge. I also brought out a spoon carving gouge, which was really useful. And uh, then I did quite a bit of sanding and cleaning up the edge. Just looking it over, finding an area that needs further work, and so on. Then a little more sanding, a little more chiseling, and so forth until I was satisfied. Now to seal the wood here, I'm starting out with this gel polyurethane, which I'm just rubbing on with a cloth. And uh, this makes the grain really come to life. Then once that was dried, I used armor seal for a final top coat. Now let's move on to the base. So I've got some of this one and a half inch wide, 3 16 inch thick flat bar steel. And I'm measuring out where I need to bend the metal. So I'm going for a 17 inch height with the table top, so I'm bending the metal at 15 inches. I was first planning on simply hammering and bending the metal using the vise alone. However, when one of my patrons, Tom Zellickman, heard about what I was planning, he offered to make me a jig to make it easier to bend the metal. And I'll leave a link to his video of making it below. And this was really useful. So you simply put the jig in the vise and steel in between the bars, and it's quite easy to bend. So I was doing some tests first, bending the metal on the marks. Then I used an angle grinder to cut the excess off. Then I clamped the steel down and drilled a hole on each end, using a liberal amount of cutting oil to lubricate. I used a 5 16 inch cobalt bit with my hand drill, since at this point I couldn't put the metal in the drill press with all the bends. 
Then I drilled holes on the underside of the slab and attached the steel with a lag bolt. And continued the process all around. Now once I had both legs attached, it was easier to see where I needed to adjust the bends a little to get the base even and straight. So I took them off and made some fine adjustments here and there. Once I was satisfied, I sanded the metal down with some sandpaper first and then some steel wool. Then I took the table outside and sprayed a few light coats of lacquer to protect the steel from rust. Now to finish the top off, I put on a coat of my Tang Oil beeswax polish to get it really nice and smooth. And uh, it's all complete. So what I love about this project is how the wood is really in focus here. And when you kind of have this live edge, it feels very natural and organic and brings a lot of warmth to a space. And I think this works in a lot of different settings, no matter whether you have more of a traditional or a modern style. And uh, I also love the uh, simplicity of the base and how it really contrasts the top. This is also a great example of how you don't always need to do any welding to include metal. And here, how I simply just bent the metal. Now working with a slab is really fun and of course you can find slabs in all different types of woods and colors and sizes and it just kind of depends on what it is that you're looking for. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if this is your first time here so you don't miss any of my upcoming projects. I'll also put links to all the products that I use in the description and I also want to really thank my patrons for supporting my work. I really appreciate it. Um, otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon.